What new methods of research do you see emerging? There's a lot of current conversation about whether we we can and should still keep thinking about methods even. So I think I think that's where a lot of the new work might be done is to is, is in relation to reconceptualizing research, reconceptualizing qualitative research in particular, re, and re, even more specifically, reconceptualizing what we mean by methods within qualitative research. Because methods implies a separation from between methods and methodology or methods and question or methods and ontology and th those are all being questioned not by everybody by any means but that that's a strong and I think compelling theme of current discourse within qualitative research. How does post-humanism affect how researchers approach the process of research? I think post-humanism affects the process of how we do research by, by demanding that we reposition our understanding of uh, where the researcher is in relation to the research and what it, what it is that we're researching. So post-humanism does the work of, amongst much else, decentering the human. It's saying we, we can no longer sustain living and researching with the notion of the human at the centre of everything we do. Are traditional definitions of ethical research practices changing? I'm not sure that they are in terms of how much qualitative research with human subjects is conducted, but I think there's a rethinking that's, that many are doing about ethics and what ethics means and about a rethinking of the kind of very, I think uh, Gilliman and Gillam talk about procedural ethics as opposed to, so the procedural ethics feels very static in how universities, for example, are conce conceptualizing ethics and what that means in a very kind of, it's done in a very uh, instrumentalized way, but I think the work that Gilliam, Gilliam and Gilliam did with that, that was from back in the early 2000s but a lot since then has been to rethink about ethics as being a process, as ethics as being something that's happening all the time in all the relationships that are occurring within research. Your work looks at collaborative inquiry, how do researchers find the ethical line in knowing what stories they can share and how those decisions influence the resulting work? At its best, that kind of ethical work is not separate from the work itself. That, that in collaborative inquiry, in particular collaborative writing, which is what I'm most involved with, there's a, a, a working with the ethics in the moment of what is happening now as I'm telling this story to and with other people I'm collaborating with, what are the ethics of that? What, what work does it do? What ethical work does it do? Um, what are the ethical risks that I, I'm taking? Uh, what are the consequences of what's happening right this minute as I'm, as I'm working? As opposed to making those kinds of decisions well before they happen. So I think it's, it's that kind of an ethical ethical know-how, an ethical know-how in the moment that it, I'm particularly aware of uh, in collaborative writing. You're writing a book for Outreach that explores effect theory and new materialism through the lens of stories of therapy and accounts of standard comedy. Can you tell us a little bit more about the book? Well, one, one way of thinking about the book is, is, is how stand-up comedy and therapy speak to each other, how they, how if we work with one, if we look at one, we also see the other, how, uh, I mean, in some ways, what happens in stand-up happens also in therapy. And I'm, I'm not thinking so much here about uh, w whether, whether stand-up is, is about, uh, is, is therapeutic, nor am I thinking about what, whether something funny happens in, in therapy. I'm more thinking about 
bringing those two together with, as you say, um, new materialist affect theory to think about how those act as a provocation for each other and how if we think with those theories, we might reconceptualize what's happening in therapy and what's happening in stand-up. And to think, for example, about how um, affect, whether that's humor or whether it's sadness or whether it's whether we call it those things, um, how they arrive in the room and what happens when they do and how that happens in, in, in and on the various kinds of bodies that there are in those spaces uh, and how if we think about that in, in a stand-up comedy club, what does that, what, what does that say, what's that doing and what's that saying and doing if we think about therapy? In, in, in and with that as well. So that's kind of what I'm playing with um, and I'm seeing what happens.